Okay, this is uh, student notes 11.7, segment relationships and circles. The first thing we're going to do here is start out with a theorem. It's called the intersecting chord theorem, which states that if two chords intersect in a circle, then the products, or when you multiply them together, of the links of the chords, Are equal. The products of the lengths of the chords are equal. So we're multi multiplying the lengths of both <coughs> of the segments of the chords together. Um, so for example on this they're saying that if you multiplied A times B because they're on the same chord that would be the same thing as or would be equal to C times D. So um, let's give these values. So let's say C is 4, B is 3, A is 8, and D is uh, 6. And if we plugged it in here, it should equal the same product. So um, A is 8, B is 3, um, C is 4, and D is 6. So three, uh, 8 times 3 is 24. And 4 times 6 is also 24. So the product of the two segments of each chord is congruent. Okay, so let's apply that on example number 1. Find x in the length of each chord. Okay. Well, remember, um, each segment of each chord times itself would equal the uh, two segments of the other chord. So 7 and 10 are on the same chord, Fe. So 7 times 10, that would equal um, 14 times whatever x is. Okay, and then we can go ahead and solve. 7 times 7, 7 times 7, 7 times 10 is 70, and 14 times x is 14x, then divided by 14, and x is 5. So if x is 5, that means this length here is obviously 7 plus 10 is 17, and 14 plus 5 gh would be 19 long. Now the chords, when you add them together, won't be equal, but they're the sum, uh, I'm sorry, the product of the two segments will be equal. Okay, we're going to save the you try this for class, and also example 2 for class as well. So we're going to move on to our next theorem, which is the secant segment theorem which says that if two secants intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the product, or again, we're multiplying, the product of the measurement of one secant segment and, it, and its external secant segment is equal to the product of the measures of the other secant and its external se secant segment. Okay, that's a mouthful, but it's really not tricky. So if we were looking at this picture, what it's saying is the piece that's on the outside is B. If you take the piece on the outside and multiply it times the sum of the um, same core or the same um, secant that it's on, so A plus B, the sum of both of those that would equal the outside piece of the other secant times the sum of the two pieces of the secant. So the outside piece times the sum of both of them put together is equal to the outside piece times the sum of both of them put together. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at a question. Um, example number three on the back side, and we're going to use the same concept. Okay, so the outside piece here is 8. So we have 8 times, okay, the sum of these two pieces put together would be 8 plus x, or x plus 8, and that's equal to the outside piece of this secant is 7, 
times the sum of them, it would be 9 plus 7 or 7 plus 9, which when you add those together actually becomes um, 16. So let's go ahead and add those together. 9 plus 7 is 16. Okay, well over here we can't add the 8 and the x together, so what we're going to do is distribute. So 8 times 8 is 64, and 8 times x is 8x. And 7 times 16, I believe, is 112. Okay, let me make sure that 7 times 16 is 112. 7 times 16. Yes, okay. So then we're going to go ahead and get the 8x by itself. I'm going to subtract 64 from both sides. So 8x is equal to... 112 minus 64 is 48, and then divide by 8. 48 divided by 8 is 6. So it says find the value of x and the length of each secant segment. Okay, well we know this segment here is 16. 9 plus 7 16. So if x were 6, then 6 plus 8 would be uh, 14. So g to e is 14. Very good. Okay, we're going to save the you try this for class tomorrow. So let's go ahead and look at our final theorem that we're going to be learning today. Three different theorems. This one is called the tangent secant segment theorem. Again, very wordy, but not hard to actually do. If a tangent and a secant intersect in the exterior of the circle, then the square of the measure of the tangent is equal to the product of the measure of the secant segment and its external secant segment. Okay. So lots of words for something very simple, okay? The difference between the problem we were just doing was that these were two secants, and the problem we're doing now is there's only one secant, and then there's a tangent. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our tangent and square it. So in this case, it's a C, and we're just going to square it because it says um, then the square of the measure of the tangent, okay? That's equal to, okay, the exact same thing we were doing up here, where we took the outside piece, E, and multiplied it times the sum of both of the pieces of the secant. So add the both pieces together, E plus A, or we could have said A plus E. It doesn't matter. Okay? So let's actually try this on example number four. Okay? So the outside, um, I'm sorry, the tangent is... L to K. So we're going to square that. So obviously X squared is X squared. And that's equal to the outside piece of our secant is 5 times that by the sum of the two pieces of our secant, 5 and 15. Add them together. Okay. Well, 5 plus 15 is 20. And then 5 times 20 is 100. Since we have an x squared and we want an x, we would just simply square root both sides. So x would equal 10. Okay. Let's try one more example. Let's try example 5. Again, we start off with the one that is tangent. In this case, that is d to g. That's, when, that's tangent. It stops right here at one place. And so we're going to square the tangent, in this case it is 10. So 10 squared is equal to, now we're going to look at the secant, and look at the outside piece of the secant, which is 7, and multiply that times the sum of both of the secant pieces, which is 7 and y. So we can do 7 plus y, or you could have done y plus 7. Okay, so in this case, we can't add the 7 plus the y together because they are not like terms. So we would go ahead and distribute. 7 times 7 is 
49, and 7 times y is 7y. We also know that 10 squared is 100. Okay, so we would get want to get 7y by itself, so we would subtract 49 from both sides. So 100 minus 49 is 51. Bring down your 7y. Divide both sides by 7. So we go to our calculator and do 51 divided by 7. It's going to be a decimal. We're going to round to two decimal places, which would be 7.29. So our y value that we are looking for is 7.29. Okay, we're going to go ahead and save now you try both of these now you tries for class tomorrow, and I will see you guys then.